Hey guys, welcome back to the barbecue patio. It is Sunday. Abby and I were going to be making some barbecue today and we're going to be smoking a relatively small pork butt over here on the Hasty Bake Roughneck. This is going to be our first pork butt roast that we smoke over here. We thought that we would share it with you and uh, see how it comes out at the end of the day, all right? So we've already got the Roughneck kind of ready to start loading up here. Got the charcoal basket emptied. And what I'm going to be using today, this is a combo that I seem to really be enjoying. I like to put these B&B char logs down there in the bottom. And there's still some left in this bag, so we'll probably just use up all these. And then we'll top it off with the uh, Hasty Bake Lump Charcoal. And then we'll also have some uh, pecan wood in the mix there as well for our smoke flavor today. So how about we get to it? I'm just going to kind of lay these down in more of a flat pattern here. Not using a lot. This was what was left in the bag, but this is going to be just fine right here. All right, now we're going to top it off with our lump charcoal. This does include a fun string game, but I always lose at that string game. <laughs> I'll show you try. what I mean. Let's, I, I've never figured out the trick, so let's see. Yeah, see, I can't. I don't ever... I don't ever get it. No, I just make a mess. So what I like to do <laughs> is I just like to cut the bag open just like that. Know what I mean? I do. It's okay to just fill this guy up because whatever doesn't get used goes into all of the barbecues right behind it. We've got our pecan wood. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a couple pieces down inside here a little bit. want a gigantic chunk how about something about like that kind of put it down in there like so all right and I actually want to take a little bit more of our lump here I'm just going to kind of put a little bit more on top of that smoke wood just something about like that right there all right we got our charcoal basket ready right here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to lift the basket just off out of the way like that. I like using the Hasty Bake fire starter, the gel fire starter. It's alcohol based and it just burns completely away. I'm just going to put some right in the middle and don't worry about this. It, it doesn't matter if you have ash. That's one of the things I learned about using that is that you can dump this right on your charcoal ash and it still burns. I'm just going to put some in the middle right there. And I usually just put like a little string right there just to kind of help me light it. Put our charcoal right back on top there. I try to just center it if I can right on the basket. I mean the ash pan. And then slide it up in there. Just a couple wood logs there that I use to keep the, uh, the ash pan elevated. It helps me get my fingers underneath it instead of setting it flat on the ground. It also is nice if you can just set it on a table too. And then we're just gonna go ahead and light it. There she goes. Yep. So that'll probably take, you know, it usually takes anywhere from about 30, 45 minutes to get the smoker leveled out where you want to. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna enjoy this 100% humidity out here in the <laughs> Florida, Florida summertime. Uh, we got rain coming through, so you may hear a little bit of that today. We got thunderstorms all around us, but this is what we wanted to do today is uh, cook some pork and just kinda 
relax today on our Sunday on our day off. That's exactly right. Yep, we'll bring you guys back and show you what we're gonna do once we get our uh, pork set up here. So while the roughneck is over there getting hot, we're gonna go ahead and season our pork butt. So this is the one that we picked right here. This is one we picked up locally from our Publix. Relatively small pork butt this is just over six pounds. This is a great size for a couple or a very small family. Of course, you know, you can get much bigger if you want to, but we saw that and thought that's the perfect size for us. We're gonna be making pork, pulled pork sliders and we're probably gonna have leftovers and make some pulled pork macaroni cheese and uh, pulled pork. tacos, pork. yeah, something. Yeah, so you name it. So let's go ahead and get it seasoned. There's our fat cap side right there. And we're gonna trim that one little piece that's not hanging off, you know. About like that right there. Now what I like to do, I like to score the fat membrane and then we're gonna bind it with some mustard right there. So we can just go in a, you know, a grid pattern like that. I like to do something about three quarter, maybe about three quarter inch square grid on there. I just think it looks great and I like smoking mine with the fat cap up. A lot of people like to do fat cap down, especially if you're using bottom heat like we're using, but I just really love the texture of the fat cap like this. So it's just a personal preference for me. Just cut this little grid pattern here. I think it looks really great whenever it starts really cooking in nicely. Just about like that right there. I'm gonna start with the bottom and the sides. Just gonna use mustard as a binder. You don't have to use mustard, but I really like it. I think it works great as a binder. Gives it a nice vinegary uh, touch there on it as well. And Abby loves mustard. Oh yeah, Abby loves her mustard. We both really like mustard, but I just think mustard works really great as a binder for any meat. I mean, I even use it on beef. Some people don't agree with that, but you can do it however you like. Some people use water, oil. It looked like some lightning, didn't it? It was lightning. We're gonna be out here doing some thunderstorm barbecue today. Oh yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and start seasoning this guy up. So for our rub today, we're gonna to be using the Bearded Butcher's Hollywood blend. This is a lot like their original blend, but it's got sugar added to it, which is great for pork. All right, and then the last side I'm gonna do is the fat cap side. I did that last so that we could stand this up and then the, uh, the seasoning will look kind of uniform on the top without all my handprints all over it. It's a nice, big, heavy piece of meat, so don't be afraid to put some seasoning on there. That's looking pretty good right there. We're still waiting on our fire to get up to the proper temp. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna stick this in our fridge 
to kind of eliminate any of the flies that want to come around here. And then once we're ready to put it on there, we'll pull it back out of the fridge and set it on the roughneck. Okay, our roughneck is right around the 275 mark. That's gonna be my target temperature that I'm gonna be smoking at today. So let's go set our pork roast on it. That's looking good. I got the grates oiled. I'm gonna try to be quick about this. I'm gonna set it on there just like that. And I've got this temperature probe I wanna stick in here. And it is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you forget about that. Somewhere about right there. And that is it. I am going to close it up. I'm going to start a timer. I always like keeping up with my time. I expect this is going to take anywhere between six and eight hours, probably more towards the eight hours. And what I usually like to do with these guys is smoke them till somewhere around the 160 170 i mean you can go higher than that if you want to once it gets to that internal tent we usually take that set it in a foil pan and wrap it up or you can just simply wrap it up in foil too and set that back on there and let it finish out till it gets to about you know 202 205 once you get up to that render temperature that's when it really just um, you know it falls apart you know when you do your fingers and you just shred it all up it works really good so another thing that I wanted to point out too is that I am not running the heat deflector in the roughneck here. I've been running the barrel smokers for several years now and I love the direct cook method where you're cooking your meat directly over the charcoal, the fat drips down into the coal, it creates more smoke and more flavor it gets into the meat. I think that's one of the secrets to the barrel style smokers right here when you're not running a heat deflector. So no heat deflector for us and I think it's gonna turn out really good. So yes, it will. we'll come back here every so often. We've got some water in that jug there and we'll give it a little spritz and keep it kind of moist. But otherwise we'll give you some updates along the way as we do our smoke today. It's really raining. It is thundering, lightning and raining today. Yes. It's a lazy Sunday today. Yes. All right guys, so we have been running a little over an hour and the roughneck on our thermometer is right around the 275 mark. I am running um, a thermometer inside that checks the ambient grate temp on my thermo cue and it's saying 290 degrees, so it's pretty close. But let's give it a check. I've got our spritz right here. I'm just using water and we're just gonna give it a nice little spritz. I like using this because it puts out a really fine mist and you can adjust that on the tip here and you just pump it up. So let's give it a check. Ready? Ready. Oh, it's smelling so good. It's looking good. Yep. All right, we're going to give it a spritz. All right. Just got to be careful that you don't do that too hard and wash your seasonings away. All right, that's it. We we'll close it up. We're just gonna keep checking this about every hour or so and just making sure everything's looking good. Our internal temp is around 76 degrees right now. So we have a long ways to go for our pork butt here. We'll check back in a little while. All right, so we've been on here for four hours now. It's showing an internal temperature of 165 degrees. I think this is gonna be a good point to go ahead and put it in the pan and cover it up and let it finish. So let's check it out and see what it looks like four hours in. Ooh. Oh yeah. It looks beautiful. Yes, it does. See the little squares of the fat cap right there? It's beautiful. Absolutely love that. Yep, but we're ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and remove it, put it in this full pan right here and wrap it up. All right, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna remove the probe. All I gotta do is just every hour or two, just check it and see where it's at. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that guy out. And I'm gonna use our towel here. Pick it up, set it on that pan right there. All right, we're gonna close this up. It smells I'm, so good. 
and you can see it's trying to burn down there that's just the that's the fat so we're going to close that up and let that settle back down and then we'll take this over here and we'll just cover it up it's looking really good i'm going to uh put a little bit more moisture in there You can, of course, put some juice or something in there if you want to, but this is going to continue to render and there'll be a bunch of juice in there from the fat. All right, now we'll just go put her back on the on the roughneck. That's just that fat, that fat that's smoking. You see right there, I was just trying to clean some of that off. And there we go. Get tender, baby. Yep, I'm just gonna let it keep cooking and tenderizing. Like I said, that smoke will die down. Once it kind of settles down, it, it heated up from us opening the smoker up, pulling it off there and it started burning that fat down in there. But that right there, that's that smoke that I'm talking about that I like on the food. When the fat from the food drip down onto the coals, yes. just adds to the flavor. Yes. So that's why I prefer to try to not run the heat deflector all the time, is just leave it off and let that fat burn in there and help smoke the meat. So we'll just keep monitoring this. We're gonna check it every hour or so and uh, make sure that it doesn't get we're just going to wait for it to get nice and rendered down it's probably going to take another two maybe three hours and it should be completely finished by that point we'll bring you back and show you that whenever we get there all right so we've been running just over six hours i think it's time to go ahead and pull this guy so we'll go ahead and pull it off and give it an inspection and uh, probe it and see what it's like by the way the uh the probe for our Thermoq says 285 degrees, so it's been running really good all day. I put it on these boards because those uh, aluminum pans are so flimsy. All right, let's give this a peek. Oh yeah looking good I can see the bone right here poking out it should be ready to go that's 207 degrees right there nice and soft it is probe tender so we are gonna pull this guy and we're gonna take it inside and we're just gonna let it rest for a while in the oven probably a couple more hours it's only about 330 right now so it's a little bit early for us and uh, We'll probably be, what, we're gonna make some mac and cheese, I think, to go with it? Of course, we're, we're having sliders, so we gotta have mac and cheese. Yeah, we got our little uh, Hawaiian rolls, and we'll have that and some mac and cheese. It's gonna be a good, good and meal. And a bomb barbecue sauce. Absolutely, uh, made some homemade barbecue. I actually did that yesterday, so uh, my homemade barbecue sauce, I've always cooked it on the stove top in a Dutch oven. I wanted to try smoking it this time, so I actually made a batch, brought it out here on the Roughneck, and smoked it for an hour to get it up to its temperature. And I think it turned out pretty good. It did. So we're going to be testing it out today now that it's cooled down. Yes. But I did want to uh, make a couple more remarks about the Roughneck itself. So this is our first pork butt that we've smoked on there. It's a classic, you know, we all love doing those. And the Roughneck worked really great. The thing that I really like about the Roughneck when we compare it to other barrel smokers like the pit barrel is that you have much better control of the heat. 
on this with your with your dampers and your vents and with the amount of charcoal that you can put in that and control the heat much better it lasts a very long time you know so we can we could run this thing all day long with one basket of charcoal in there yes. and the pit barrel did not allow me to do that so now that we're finished uh, smoking with it it's just a simple the back one gets really hot but so i usually put my gloves on for this so now it's time to just go ahead and close off these vents and we'll do the same thing for the back, close it off, and that'll snuff that charcoal out. And we have a lot there left for the, the next cook. So this is working really good, and I'm loving my roughneck. So we will see you guys in a little while, whenever we're ready to shred this pork up and give it a taste test and see what it's like. I'm going to overeat. Are you? Yeah, I can already tell. I predict it's that I'm probably going to overeat too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just closing that vent up. I had to pull my probe out of there. That's why I couldn't shut it earlier. But I told Abby, I said, let's go ahead and look at our charcoal basket and see what it's looking like after six hours, 15 minutes to cook, plus about 45 minutes to get ready. So that's been burning for about seven hours now. I'll go ahead and get down here and slide this out so you can see. Yeah, see that? Yeah. You've got three quarters of that basket still left after seven hours after seven hours of cooking Amazing. and it snuffs it out very quickly because this door is sealed and the lid is sealed so it doesn't take very long you know i'd say i'd say in under an hour this uh roughneck is pretty well cooled down to the you know where you can handle it and touch it so Amazing. just really great fire management heat management that's some of the benefits of the Roughneck. So I just wanted to kind of point that out as we continue to try our first cooks on it and uh, learn how it works. By the way, the food is starting to be better is because it? it's... Because it's seasoned in. Yes. And it, I think it makes a huge... Like you can almost tell like the day that it's right because yeah. it's... It yeah. just has that... Well, that's another thing flavor. that... That's another thing that makes it any grill or smoker or cooker... Uh, even better is once you get several cooks on it, yeah. it starts getting it seasoned in well. You have that fat layer on the inside and it just adds to the fragrance. Yes. You know, you can just walk by here without it even on and you could smell this thing. Yes. Same thing with our legacy down here. You can yeah. walk by and you can smell that. But you got you got it right. It's yeah. it's where it needs to be. And the 250 Pro is also yeah. there. So Yeah, we, we have a really good working system right <laughs> <We> here <do. laughs> between our three grills. I, I really like it. I'm loving my Hasty Bakes and yeah. you know, I'm glad I started making the investments in these grills because yeah. I have finally found uh, some grills that I just, not only do I just enjoy using, I absolutely love them. Yeah. You know, good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, we'll quit rambling and we'll show you what the pulled pork looks like in a little while. All right, it is time to shred up this pork yes. and see what kind of finish we have. Yes. We've had it, we just set it in the oven there. I uh, just kept it wrapped up in this towel and it is still very hot. smells so good like mm -hmm. it does smell very good it's a nice size roast for us yes it is all right see there's your bone that's gonna pull right on out of here nice and easy just like that nice mm -hmm. and are we ready for it we are ready go let's see how it shreds up just like you want. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's all that juice in the bottom there. That's mm -hmm. exactly. And yeah. see, I like having the fat cap up here kind of mixed into all of the pork. I think it's just really good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and give this a uh, taste test right here. Mm -hmm. Dynamite. Ugh. It's good. Well, of course it is. Would you like me to... Uh, yeah, to feed me some? Feed you a little piece. There you Please. go. See what you think. Mmm. Mmm, it's so good. Yeah, that's good. But you see how easy all this shreds up? I'm sorry. I wasn't... I was, like, paying attention to my, my bite. It all just pulls very easy. Mm. I think this is one of my favorite... I say that about everything you make, and this is one of my favorite things. 
you can see this is the bottom where it was sitting over the heat. You might have a few spots like that where it's a little bit tougher than the rest of it, but that's still good right there. And some of the people in the family, like they love eating that. Yep. Uh, but generally, if you have your heat right, which we did today on the Roughneck, yes. it did really well. So we'll just continue to shred this up right here, get all of that juice mixed in there. And then stuff our faces. Yep, and stuff our faces. <laughs> but this is a win right here. I gotta have another bite. Please do. Was that pitmaster privilege? Mm -hmm. It is. So this is delicious. We're gonna eat our meal. The Roughneck did a great job today smoking this pork roast. Look at that, six pound roast. We got a whole pan of meat right there. It is awesome. Mm. All right. It's time to eat. <laughs> it's time to eat. And uh, we'll see you again on the back patio, all right?